Now let's extend the requirements for the car safety warning system a little bit. Let's say we say that it's exactly the same as before, except that once the alarm is triggered, it can be turned off only when the offending condition is rectified. Note that it means just stopping the car won't disable the alarm, but one has to uh, either wear the seat belt or remove the handbrake. Only then the alarm will, will sound, even though the trigger condition was only when the car was moving. But once the alarm is triggered, we want it to continue till the actual cause is rectified. So the code for that is shown on the right side. Now we have initial trigger condition in the if statement here, which is similar to earlier. So the flag alarm is either initially false and then when the trigger condition that car is moving and either the seat belt is not worn or the handbrake is locked, then the alarm uh, flag becomes true. And if the alarm is true, we will trigger the alarm. But then to keep the alarm ringing until the trigger is more removed, that is when the car is stopped also, you need the while loop here. While alarm is true, and then the condition remains the same, the alarm will continue to ring. Otherwise, the alarm will become false. So it is stopping the audible alarm at that point. Now, what's important here is not the use of while loop per se, but the fact that the condition now includes the alarm as, an, as a control variable. Basically, what we are saying is that not only the input variables, that is the seatbelt status or the handbrake status, but also the alarm status is becoming an input to the behavior of the system. So it's essentially a feedback of the previous state into the current state. So we are already talking about states. So this is a sequential logic, not a combinatorial logic because there is a feedback of the output as an input again. So the input is alone not determining the output, but the input along with the past output is determining the new output. Such logic is called sequential logic. So we will talk more about sequential logic in terms of state machines. What we are interested is to model the behavior of the system. And then we can actually see if the model is performing as per the requirements which is basically traceability to the requirement and the model can lead to an implementation and one can trace the implementation to the model. The usefulness of the model comes in the sense that it can be used to evaluate the behavior under all possible conditions and check that it meets all the requirements and doesn't do anything which is contrary to the requirements. To do that, the, the first step is to identify the objects of interest in the system whose behavior we are trying to model. And the behavior itself has to be defined in some formal, uh, formal specification or formal language or a diagrammatic way. And then look at the interaction between objects, not just the objects in, in isolation. And then see if those interactions influence the behavior of other objects and vice versa. So this is basically the intention of modeling the system so that before even implementing, we can have a proper understanding of the requirement, translate it into a formal model, and the model can be a reference for implementation.